All right, what's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, this was a last minute, a last minute effort. I didn't know if I was, uh, I didn't know if I was going to do this episode tonight. Kind of a little bit tired from working today, but I said, well, let me go ahead and push through and do it. So give me just a second. Because it's kind of humid down here and I didn't have anything set up to do this episode tonight. Didn't even have the camera, but I managed to find a spare webcam I had, had lying around. So I said, well, what the hell? Let's go ahead and do it. find my mic all right let me know if you can hear me testing one two testing one two uh, let me know who's out there i just sent the link to a few people that i was debating on if i wanted to do it tonight and so i said well let me go ahead and do it Go ahead and get these points out because this is something interesting that a lot of people that you guys need to know about your library that um, that I've went a little deeper into with another DJ's library that I'm working on that had had some issues, had a lot of issues. So give me a second. Let me clean my glasses. Get my fan situated because it's kind of toasty down here. And send out to a couple people. All right, like I said, once again, for those of you that don't know, my name is Kenyon Ellis. I go by The Kid, AKA The Kid, and you are tuned in to Atlanta DJ Zone Tech Tuesday Live podcast that I started a couple of years ago where I cover DJ tech and other related topics from not only, not only just DJ stuff, um, live streaming to to pro audio and even stuff on the business side. Basically, whatever I discover that that needs to be discussed, that may go on in some of the chat rooms or some of the groups. And I basically bring out with my opinions, answers, tips, tricks, whatever that I share to everybody. And I post this on YouTube, so it's easily available for use after the show is over. Now, sometimes these shows may go long, especially when I have guests to come up. And I may just open open the floor tonight for guests to come in and people to share their opinions and, and ask questions and to uh, to get a lot of more insight detail and information than just just me which that helps out a whole lot because getting getting other feedback and opinions and stuff is a lot useful when i'm doing the show because i may i may miss something um i may not cover something or i may even just get something wrong complete, completely um that is kind of rare but yeah i'm human so everything is not perfect but tonight tonight's topic is going to be based on something i've been working on for like the past week 
Um, I'm working on another DJ's drive. He had issues and um, I've been working on it for almost, I think probably close to a week now, if not anything. And I'm still working on it like right now. I'm probably maybe 80 to 90 percent from complete. And right now there's a there's a dramatic difference in in uh, performance from what it was doing when I first received it up to today. So I'm going to be sharing some of the stuff that I found along the way that may be interesting to you that you may know. So some of the stuff I'm going to be sharing, I guess the main thing is a lot of people want to know why their system all of a sudden crash during the performance. They could be in the middle of a set and it just crash and shut down. What I'm going to tell you tonight could be one of those issues. So this is basically unknown stuff. You can have your, your, your set to just completely shut down, but you have no reason why. This is one question that I ask a lot of people when I'm troubleshooting because it can happen. So now I'm going to go into it a little bit more detail as for what to look for in cases like that, where it just unexpectedly crashed, shut down. It can be either the program itself or it can be the whole computer. And there are some things that you may have that you may not be aware of that can cause it to do that. So that's what that's what we're going that's what we're going to jump into tonight. And I'm probably going to be bouncing uh, since I don't have um, I don't have banners or anything like that set up. And I usually set up the banners so that when the show is over, I can go back and add track markers to where anybody that may want to watch this later on, they can jump and skip to certain things that I said. But um, I didn't have time to do that tonight. This was impromptu. So we just gonna we just gonna go with the flow tonight, and then when I get to the point where I can start editing, we're gonna um, we're gonna go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, again, here's the here's the scenario of what happened. Had a DJ. He has a library, and he has a very large library. His library consists on several different drives. He had one on like um, a basic drive similar to similar to something like this, something that you can buy out of Walmart or your local computer store. And he also has that on another drive, which is which is a lot larger. Now, I have the, the larger drive. He still has his other drive that he's using to do his performance and he's probably most likely experiencing the same issues that he been experiencing before I even came into the picture. So that's what he has to use right now until I complete the drive that I'm working on. So um, real quick in the com comments, let me know, let me know how my sound is because I have a fan on and it may be blowing air into the mic, even though I have a, a windscreen on it. I just want to make sure that my sound is good. My video is good. So far, I see. Let me go and check the YouTube and see what it looks like. Okay, that is. Let me jump okay, to live. That is. Okay. And my latency is not as bad as what it is. All right. So back to the story. Two drives. They're both cloned. So the, the original drive that he had like this, he also cloned it to another drive that was larger. I currently have that drive right now and it's connected to the computer that I'm working on right now. So um, with that, before... Uh, 
when when we met, we met at uh, Micro Center in Gwinnett County or nearby here. Uh, I basically looked over the computer to see what what issues that he was having, and it was it was horrible. It was uh it, it was at some points the drives weren't recognizing, uh, they weren't mounting up on the Mac, and uh and basically it took a long time like a very long time before the library was show and you would be able to have access to do anything now after getting it here i also have this macbook here too which is a 2016 uh macbook pro it would take up to two hours two hours where it will completely load now his library is large um, right now i'm scanning about close to 276,000 uh tracks and right now i'm about one 190 almost at almost at 200 almost at 200,000. so i'm a little bit i'm a little bit over a third third of the way from what serato shows me right now so um i'm still right now i'm doing the analyze which uh which is something that's needed and um after that i may do because he has uh, a whole bunch of duplicate files and then with my with my computer moving it around from from usb 3.0 drive to a usb c it changed the drive letters so changing the drive letters it was on it was originally on drive located as drive g but somewhere um during a reconnect it changed it changed to it changed to drive e so now i have this library listed as g but then there's also missing files that are listed as e so when i change back to his macbook and do a scan it should clear that out because i have about at least two or three other drives inside the computer that i'm using right now now the computer that i'm doing the stream on and that i'm also doing the analyze on is a custom built computer it is um it is a ryzen 7 i think it's a 3800 uh ryzen 7 3800 cpu so it has eight cores now with those eight cores there are a total of 16 threads so for every core there's two threads. Now with those two threads, that's what you see when I show a picture of, uh, of the tracks being analyzed. So that makes a difference right there whenever you're doing, um, you're doing an analyze. So if you have like a quad core, uh, um, well, mostly quad core, uh, dual core is probably only going to give you maybe up to four, possibly eight depending on uh, depending on what processor that you use and the specs on that processor so the more cores you have the more scans you get so with the eight core processor i can do 16 scans at one time now that's 16 scans starting that's 16 scans processing but only one process at a time so you can have 15 that finish the second part, but the right part, which I'm going to explain later, it flashes one at a time. And, I, and I'll show that stuff as uh, as I move along. So. Um, so that's what I, that's what I'm scanning on it. Uh, eight core, eight core, 16 threads, which is scanning at a faster rate than his. His MacBook is an i5 which scans at uh four four threads per second so it has to be a dual core base so uh i switched over and connected it to my desktop so the process would go a whole lot quicker but when i finish when it finishes on my computer i'm gonna connect it back to his and we're gonna see how the process works there um uh eight core 32 gigs this computer has 32 gigs of ram his has 16. 
So in order to finish this, it was better for me to use my computer, even though I did start on the heels for a while, but it was taking extremely long time to, to try to do anything, especially, especially at that time that it was having a lot of hangups and it was taking hours for it to completely load up. What's up, Alan? Thanks. Thanks for letting me know that uh, that you can hear me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. So um, what did I start on first? And I may have to jump to the notes where I, I kept a constant update with them. Maybe not every day, but at least two days or something like that to let him know what the process is and was taking was taking so long, I would send snapshot pictures. I would even send video clips of what the process is doing. That's just something that I do let people know that, you know, that I'm working on it. It's, it's a tedious but long process. So it's been working like nonstop, except for the points where it, it and I've had this to happen a couple times where something has caused it to crash and it needs my attention where I come in here and I'm like, oh, it stopped. It's either completed or it crashed and shut the program down. I've had that a couple of times and I have to restart it. But like right now with the process that I'm running right now to analyze has been running for. Has been running for at least 24 hours now. Uh, when I tried to calculate how long it may take and what I did, I checked to see how many tracks can analyze, uh, how long will it take to analyze a uh, hundred tracks? And I set my watch on timer. I did it as a timer, even though each track may fluctuate a little bit. Uh, when I did that, it was for a hundred tracks, took about 56 seconds. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just, let's just round that off to one minute. So every one minute, a hundred tracks. And then I took the number of tracks that it was analyzing and did the math with that. And it came up. Well, at that point, it was it was half. It was somewhere close to halfway. It was saying 20 hours. So I'm like, cool, about a little bit earlier than now, maybe about an hour or two. It should have been done. But I see that there's there's been hang ups to where um, like right now is. It's not running slow. The process is running fast. It's the, the very last process step in the analyze that needs to process through or that needs to bottleneck through. And I'll show that in a couple of seconds and explain a little bit more how that works. If you haven't seen any of my other videos where I've explained the process of what goes on when you do uh, analyze. So, um, the, the main problem, and let me jump to this. The main problem or possibly the two main issues that I found with this library is one, the file names are way too long. So let me make this a note. Note number one, keep your file names that you have your tracks located in short. So basically what I mean is if you can clean up your file names, whatever, um, whatever track that you may have, let's say uh, track one, and then you have a dash and then you have the artist name featuring so-and-so and clean. That's all that you need to have. Uh, unless it's like a remix or something like that, that specifies different from the clean, the dirty, the instrumental, the acapella, any of the, the special tracks that you may have. If it's made by DJ XYZ, remixed by DJ XYZ, you can include that, but leave a lot of the other stuff out of the picture. And that's just for the track. Also, make sure that you don't stack stuff into several uh, subfolders. Now, if you have uh, if you have your main folder, 
that that track is in or the first folder that is in and say if that track if that if that folder is 20 characters then you create a subfolder and say that track is 12 characters and then you have maybe a third subfolder that is in that's going that that file name is going to be so long in some cases it may not even read and and i'm going to tell you this with with some um operating systems i'm not sure about mac but i know with windows you can't transfer it it becomes impossible to transfer or copy something from something that has a file name that long because you may have created it somewhere else another another uh operating system or even that same operating system may not recognize as for something that it may want to transfer so that's point number one point number one keep your file names short keep it short keep your sub crates short keep your main folder short keep it to the point all right so that's number one number two issue and this is the one that that becomes the unknown that you may have and may not realize it, but this right here will cause the crash. And this is the problem that I had. Um, I'm gonna show this one. I'm probably gonna show this one first since I have, uh, I've been taking clips of what it's been doing and you'll be able to see firsthand that this is an issue. Using invalid or illegal characters. Now, what I mean by invalid or illegal characters is like maybe using something that that operating system or that particular program may not be compatible with or use. Like say for instance, if you have emojis in your, uh, in your file name and you can possibly do it by adding, you know, if, if you have bangers, uh, if you have a crate that's called bangers, and you want to put like uh, the little flame emoji in it, putting it in your track can cause issues. And what happens is, is that when you're trying to analyze or when you're trying to play it, your DVS may not recognize it and it may lock up. So a lot of questions, and this is what I said in the beginning that I asked people, when I asked people uh, questions about, you know, they may have had, they may have been playing a good set and then all of a sudden it just crashed. Now it can either be that they've loaded that track or somehow that track came to the, the program where it picked up and said, Oh, invalid, invalid, shut down, boom, shut down. So a lot of things that I, uh, a, a lot of questions that I ask, I try to backtrack a person's process. I'm like, okay, what was the last track that you loaded before it crashed? And then I will have them to recreate. If you have, uh, if you have playlists uh, in Serato set up, then you would know what track that you have. And so if that, if that file that you play was corrupted and it can be corrupt without you doing a scan, you can have a corrupt and that's why you always want to do an analyze because analyze will tell you what files are corrupted and you can even have a file corrupted even if it's not actually a corrupted file like say for instance on an album on uh say if you if you convert an album to various tracks that you're using in your dvs now if you do that whole album and you have the prelude and you have the intros and the outro track listed as tracks it may not see that as a full track and it's and i'll go into a little bit deeper when i pull up the analyzing process that i'm going through now is that uh when it analyzes, it shows it it picks up a lot of information. It reads a lot of different information that it needs to see to create that. And so if it doesn't have that information or that information is invalid, like say for instance, if there's tempo or pitch changes 
or even if there's no music or if there's music and it's sporadic or just something in it to where it says red flag, red flag, red flag, then that can become corrupt. And like I say, it can be corrupt without it actually not being corrupt. The program just doesn't recognize it as a regular music track. It can be, you know, gunshot, airplane sounds or whatever, as well as talking, but really no music. And it will recognize to the point that it's invalid. All right. So like I said, those are the, those are the two things that uh, those are the two issues that I had. And in order to clear up the last one, which after clearing up the last one, and let me explain this. Now with the, um, what's going on, Eric? Yep. On the, on the subfolders and definitely windows. If I get to a point, I may try to create something to where you would get that, that error. I'm not for sure on Mac. It may happen on Mac, but it, it definitely happened on windows, especially if you're trying to clone, if you, if you're trying to clone a drive just within the windows environment, like if you're trying to copy or move, a whole drive over to another drive. You may have some files when you get to the process. It may be at, it may wait until the end. It may be somewhere in the middle that it'll give you. I can't can't read this file or can't transfer this file or whatever. So you have to skip it. And that's when your folders and you have subfolders that have long string or long file names that have that issue. So um, I guess first get into the last one, the illegal characters, the illegal characters, like I say, it can create a bigger issue than what you have. And the problem that I had, and let me see if I can get, nope, I don't want to do that. Let's, I need to do, Screen share. I did like a few seconds and I did this. I did this last night. I said, well, let me take some snapshots or uh, screenshots and show what can happen with invalid characters. And I'm going to also show the invalid characters themselves. Now, what I had to do in this situation. I had to find each track that was causing an issue and remove it and then stop to analyze and restart it. And every time I remove something and restart it, it starts to flow a little bit quicker. So imagine it like this. Imagine each corrupted file or each each track that had illegal characters is uh, like a rock in in um, in a pipe or yeah in a pipe or something like that. For each rock that you have, it it restricts the flow. It restricts the flow of water for each issue that I have. So what I had to do, I had to shut the water off, which means stop to analyze, go into Windows Explorer pull out each rock or each track that was causing the issue and then go back and turn the water back on or start the process again to where you'll be able to see it. It'll be able to flow smoothly. So that's my analogy on that as for what I'm about to show you right now. So let me get that up. this screen and let me pull it out till I get the till I get the tracks loaded all right all 
All right, let me show this first while I got it up. This is the part that I'm gonna show first. All right, so here we go right here. These are all the files that were giving me issues. And it's, it's a total of 56. Now, uh, it, it, it's actually less than that because Mac, and I still haven't understand how this works. The drive that he has is set up to where, and that's a good thing that I can read it on Mac and Windows. So that makes it a lot easier for me to work on because if it was basically Mac, then I wouldn't have as many cores as I have right now to run it with. So what these are, these right here aren't, these are files that cannot be played right here. These are files that cannot be played this. And that's what Mac creates when you're looking at it on windows, you'll see duplicate file names, but it'll have a dot underscore and then the name of the file. And that's something that, 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 um, that Mac needs to read. Now, can I delete them? Possibly. Do I want to No. And so when I transferred the copy and I basically move the track from his drive to a flash drive that I have here. And even, even if I tried to move it to one of my drives, it will still be recognized. So I had to move it to a flash drive, something that I could pull out and that's not connected to the computer altogether. So that's, that's what I had to do. And so, um, I just copied both files to be for sure, to make sure that it was completely removed. So let's see. And another thing too, the tracks, the tracks that I removed were either FLAC, which is the file extension name, or it was AFF, AFFI or AFF is a, that's an Apple, um, format let me see where is it uh a-i-f-f like this one and the thing is you can't see the invalid characters that i saw when i remove them but it shows up you see right here there's a dot that's the invalid character if i transfer it back to his drive and show it it'll show up as something completely different. I think it shows up as like a pair of headphones or something like that. It shows up as a, um, as a, um, as like a emoji or something like that. But if you look there, there's like a, there's like a dot and let me zoom in. Let me make the, oh, oh that was wrong. All right, uh, I remember what, here we go. If I can make the file names bigger, nope, I'm just changing the, okay, that is a little bit bigger. So if you see right here, this is the invalid character. Um, the flag, I can't remember what was wrong with this one but all these tracks i had to remove all these tracks to continue what i'm about to show you in just a few minutes so like i say having the correct name and valid characters in your in your um And your DVS is very important. All right, let me find those files. And these are like video clips. I think I recorded them at about three seconds. Uh, let's see, what is this one? Nope, this is not one. Oh, 
Okay, so looking at one, I want, okay, this is one. And let me stop that screen share, do it to a different location. All right, let me start it over. Now I'm gonna point out, let me point out the, the issues that I see here. The issues that I see, if you look at the last two tracks, and let me stop it real quick. I'm gonna stop it so you can. All right. Okay, stop. Okay, there we go. Pause. Now, the two tracks that I see that have not moved in this third process. Okay, it's still running. Oh, wait a minute. I shared the wrong screen. Hold on. Yep, I shared. I got I got a video playing of a screen share. And then I got the actual one that's being shared. So I got four screens running, so um, I need to get it changed up to the one that I'm actually, uh, why is it coming up screen three? Okay, that is the one, that one right there is the one that I need to have running. So right now, let me go back so you can see it, see what I'm talking about. Started from the beginning. All right, now notice the two last tracks that they never leave this process. Anything that doesn't go into the second step, that's where it hangs up. It hangs up right there. So watch. As you can see, it never moves. Everything else is moving along except for, and then there's another one. This one right here. And I think, yep, and this one. So the the first two, the fourth one, and then the last two, and the plies. Plies was one I had to remove. This one and the midnight hour, which is a flack. Um, and then this one, T Pain featuring Rich Homie Quan, and then the last two, which were Ted Smooth remixes. They never moved. I had to remove them in order for that process to finish. So, let's see. Yep, that was that process there. So now let me jump to the next video or another video. And each time you see, I'm removing the track. And like I said, this is a this is an eight core computer, 16 threads, which allowed me to scan 16 tracks at a time. Now, as you can see right here, it's moving. It's moving pretty fast because only a certain amount of tracks are going through. I'm not processing um, all of them. And as you can see, that was let's go back again. Let me play it again. You can see that only three or four, three are moving. And as they as they finish, only whatever pops up in those three are moving. So guess what happens once I get three more tracks? Once I get three more tracks, that is an issue. It completely stops. It doesn't pass this point, period. So this this process and this process never happens. So everything hangs up to here and maybe eventually Serato DJ will crash if I'm not available to, to do any intervention or whatever. So it did happen. It, when I came in to look at it, it was frozen. And so I, uh, I stopped it. I, well, I took note of what tracks need to be changed and I did it a few at a time just so I can, 
show you now, you see now that it's to the it's almost to the point where all 16 are being blocked, only had 13. 13 that were blocked, and I would only scan it at three, which was less than his MacBook. His MacBook scanned with four. So now I'm even less than what his computer was, less than a, um, a dual core. So next picture. I think this one. Nope, I did another snapshot of this one. Still got the same same issues like i said if i had three more issues to come up it would completely stop all right let's go to another one uh what did i do here okay i didn't mean to do that one all right let's go second all right got a lot of stuff popping up all right let's go to the next one let's see what did i do with this one Oh, this is where this one, this clip right here is showing the member that I mentioned earlier that I had um, when I connected it, when I changed the, the drive, when I changed the connection, it showed up as it, it originally showed up as G, drive G, but then it changed to E. And so at that point, it started doing um, lost, lost files which I would need to run that again with the, um, with the drive actually connected into something different. So that's what, that's what happened there. This one, uh, that was the same. Okay. This one. Okay. Now we're back to analyze. This was after I cleaned up, I cleaned up the ones that you saw earlier, but it filled right back up with more. And this one wasn't the full analyzed. There is actually a lot more tracks than what this one should have been analyzing it. But as you can see right here, all these Ursulas and scams, all these prevented, I mean, from even scanning, period. They weren't, these weren't scanned, period. And it was because, I think these were because of the, um, the invalid characters think those were the invalid characters so what i had to do is go and move all these to another flash drive which you're going to see in the next picture i started taking them out yep as you can see right here i started taking out all the ursulas are gone that were here and now i can scan more tracks i still have these here right here but i can scan i can scan more and it scans a lot faster and in, in just a second, I'm gonna explain exactly uh, what happens when, uh, what, what's the scanning process? How does Serato um, scan and analyze your tracks? What, what is the process that it do? And here is another one where I took out more, except for the last two, um, a Nelly track, which is an A, a I F F to A I F F. And as you can see, it, it scans pretty quick. All right. And this was the last one that uh, I took. And this was all of them except for that one. And did it freeze up? What did I stop it? 
wait, let me go back a second. Uh, I can't remember why it stopped. But I did clean all of them up. I did remove everything. And right now, even with the process that I'm running right now, um, I could possibly run into more that it hadn't reached yet. So right now I'm watching this to make sure everything is analyzing and processing. And right now, um, since I'm streaming from this computer, it's not running as fast as what you see right now. All right, so let me... Oh, and I think I did, I think I had to, I think it did freeze up. Because I see some of the, some of the process is like skipped. I can't remember what happened here, but, um, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have did that. This should have been grayed out too. It is like it jumped to this process. And so that may have been an issue too, but I can't remember if, um, if I actually had to, all right, we done with that. All right. So that's done. And let's see. Did I remove I think it was a Kilo Ali track. But yeah, I had to remove and it, it was a manual process. Now, uh, taking this to, and, and, I, and I was thinking, wow, with the issue that he had, would somebody that didn't know anything about Serato, would they would they would have known what to do with what they would have done the right process would they would have known that this was the issue and not this was the issue so it it was a good thing that he brought it to me because it was something that i was familiar with or you know i knew what to do but you may have had some people that didn't know what to do that uh that may have took different steps that may have ran a virus scan or may have ran something that that shouldn't have been run that would have never really resolved the issue so uh being able to go to somebody that knows what they're doing with a situation like this is important that's why i offer offer the service because some people may not know exactly what they need to do but now you guys know and it, it may be a lot more that uh that you can have as a problem but this was this was the issue that he had here it was the 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 long file names which he he still needs to clear that may be uh that may be still an issue but now i've gotten his load time from like and i've timed it or I've timed it as close as I can um, from like two hours. Now, I know at least over 45 minutes. One time I timed it, it was close to two hours. From taking two hours to where it's done loading, you know, at the bottom of Serato in the orange, where it says loading, where it's loading your tracks when you first start, and it shows all your crate information and all your tracks, Okay, it showed the crate and track information quickly, but when you try to load something or click on something, you get the the spinning, you get like the spinning pinwheel or the spinning little wheel or whatever, which means you it, it it's a slow process. Something is holding up. So uh, it took about two hours before all that disappeared, and you could just use it normal. And that includes loading all the tracks because everything was filed. Uh, and that was that was another thing that I had to do. I had to go and and remove. I remove certain tracks 
that took a long time that took maybe 15 minutes or more to completely load. And what I had to do, I went, I went, stopped the program when I saw it, write down the location where it was located, the file name, and it usually was something long and I would remove that track. So it wouldn't scan that track. Then I would have to shut down, restart, and then do the whole process over. So I've did, um, I've did removing tracks, analyzing, uh rescanning database i've done the uh the create the uh the v2 database at least maybe once or twice may end up doing it again um, i've done everything that you would normally get from serato to do plus plus some more so now it's down to the last time i had to restart which it i think it crashed at the point that i was running the scan I had to restart Serato. It took maybe less than two minutes. I know less than two minutes. I timed it. I think it was like a minute, 15 seconds, which is good, which is good for like uh, how much? Uh, I think it got like close to three terabytes of music and videos and stuff on there. So that was good compared to what it took before. And I know it's supposed to take a shorter time, but with the amount of issues that he had that I'm sure that is a big impact on, um, on, uh, what he was having. Now, let me see. Cause I see that I haven't been looking at the screen. So let me look and see what's going on. Cause I see there's a lot of questions or chatter going on in the, in the talk. So let me jump to the last one. Let's see. Eric said uh, that corrupt bull happens to me a lot. Yep, well, that's what you need to do. Check your check your file name if you have them in subfolders. Make sure you shorten up the short subfolders. You shouldn't really have you should you don't really need no more than maybe one subfolder. You may have like an album. Say if you have an album, like with me, I have stuff listed by discard uh, discography. So I will have. The folder, the main folder, discography. And then in that, I may have uh, uh, hip hop, early old school hip hop. Then in that, I may have the album name. Let's say an artist, like let's say Eric B and Rakim, uh, Eric B is president, or whatever the album, whatever album I want to name. That's the album. That's the album folder. That is the folder for the album then i got the tracks in that folder so right there i've created four subfolders the main folder saying that this is uh these are four albums this discography in that and then the genre type and then the album and then uh that's three subfolders and then the name of the track which that can be extremely long so um, going through and clearing that out to where it's shorter helps out a whole lot, helps out completely a whole lot. So, um, that's what you need to do in that case. Good dog. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, EX fat, if you're, if you're, um, uh, if you ever get a new hard drive and you want to be, you want to have it compatible with Mac and Windows, make sure you format it as e is actually e x fat not just x fat it's e x fat um we'll delete look at the size there is usually the full version somewhere else on the drive um let me see i'm thinking you're talking about the files that i moved i moved them because i just didn't want to delete them i, I didn't want to go through deleting stuff out of his out of his um out of his folder so i wanted to let him know what it is that was causing the issue um and so either at that point he needs to go to his record pool and re-download a clean issue or take this issue copy it to a flash drive and clean it up clean it up to where it's not it's not causing any issues so like i said some of them a file name, but I think some of them, it was something else in it that was causing the issue, but you don't know until it happens. 
Um, what's up, C Dog? Uh, just to let y'all know, I'm sure y'all got the memo. Pandemic Games and Entertainment Group is coming back in July. I'm looking at July 10th for the first, the first one for the month of July. And um want to try to do another one July 24th. Two weeks later, we're gonna do another. So if y'all guys available or if there's anybody that want to submit a mix or have a mix play in the pandemic games and entertainment group premiere live event get at me inbox me and let me know because uh, right now a lot of people are starting to transition back into their normal gigs or whatever they may not be able to do the pandemic but i would still let i would still accept videos and audio submission to be played an hour long video and audio submission that can still be played while people are playing games and being entertained or whatever so make sure y'all get with me and i'll probably mention more before i get off all right now your question was uh what's up what causes some of my folders of rock tunes to end up in my reggae folder what causes some of my folder my folder of rock tunes now, if it, I, I can't say what happens if if it's not your intervention, if it's not something, maybe you accidentally moved it over by highlighting maybe additional track or additional folder that ends up being placed. But if you're doing that and that folder comes up as uh, orange, then you need to move it back because... What you're doing, what it's doing is that Serato, Serato saw where it was at first. Then you moved it, and then Serato saying, wait a minute, we can't find this folder anymore. We can't find these tracks. And so what you have to do there with hardware disconnected, have your controller, mixer, or whatever, have no hardware connected, and go into click on files, and then click on uh, relocate lost files so that it will scan the whole drive to find music that was in one location but moved to the other and then it it should move it and be able to say oh okay we found it now we found it we see that you moved it over to this folder or over the disk drive or whatever and it will be a pickup and i hope that answered the question on what you said about that but uh if it didn't mention again, like I said, I'm going through all the going through all the okay, you said what's up? Okay, y'all talking to each other there. Uh, yeah. Pandemic games, baby. We back. Facebook has finally opened up the room again. Thank goodness. And I think they made a couple changes too. But I haven't when I when I was talking to somebody and I said, well, I was doing the pandemic game. And then some said, well, check and see if they finally uh, accepted my request to have the rooms re-enabled because there was an update that was done to the group. And it, um, I went ahead and did the, I went ahead and did the update without reading everything in the fine print or somewhere at the bottom, it said, it actually said rooms and another feature will be disabled and it sure enough it disabled and it even showed me as disabling and within 24 hours later rooms just disappeared so that kind of ended the uh rooms for like two months i think two three months because i only did it for like maybe the first two months maybe three months or whatever and so we went like two months without it. And my mom was not happy. And so I had to explain to her that, well, it's, it's something Facebook and what my plan that I was going to do, if it didn't happen soon, I was just going to create a whole new group and then tell everybody to migrate over, which I did not want to do. So this, Thank you, Facebook, for listening to me. If you did listen to me, or basically making making that making that happen, uh, yep, pandemic games, baby, yes, sir. All right, um, 
how many terabytes uh this drive the drive the drive that i have right now is a five terabyte drive and i think let me look at it real quick because i can pull up properties he has almost two almost three terabytes two point two point eight four terabytes is used and he has like a 1.69 that's available so almost almost three terabytes and it well it actually says 3.1 terabytes but then that may be with the exception of allocated files and other stuff that that windows and other operating system use that you don't never get to use you lose you can lose up to 10 15 percent of a drive when you when you format it and prepare it to be used even a flash drive i don't even think there's anything that you can buy now where you can use the actual full size of the drive it's a shame waste of money anyway all right uh there were some laughs all right any other question oh ace whoa brother welcome back welcome back you must didn't have any events tonight you must didn't have your uh your taco tuesday or your gig that you usually do on tuesday ever since you did that i've been missing you brother haven't been seeing you here good to have you here even though this was a last minute loading and about one yeah loading in one minute is good for almost three hundred thousand for 300,000 files, 275,000, 276,000, basically. About 276,000 loading in, in that amount of time. And I don't know, I think I'm having issues now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show y'all what, what the analyzing screen looks like at this point while I'm talking so you can see. All right, so right now this is this is what I'm looking like on the analyzing screen that's being analyzed. It's still a slow process, but it's moving. Now let me go ahead and explain what happens when something is being analyzed. I'm gonna go ahead and explain what happens when the analyzed process is going through. Then I'm gonna go through some stuff that you need to do some stuff that you might want to do whenever basically basically tips for uh for cleaning up your library i'm not i don't have a, a general idea of any programs i may add that in uh later because there's still a lot of programs that i haven't tried um and there's still a lot of stuff that uh that i haven't done now the, uh i guess the question i want to ask and i was going to try to and i probably should have held this up to next week to be able to talk to somebody. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen either on their timeline where uh, there's a company called uh, Crate Hackers. And their thing is, is that, I don't know exactly how it works, but they can help improve your library and your crates. And I don't know exactly what the process, but I wanna try to get in contact with somebody and maybe schedule an interview and find out what what is, what is crate hackers and how does crate hackers work? So that's going to be something that I'm going to be looking into uh, for the future. But right now you see everything's running. And I think that last one, that last one at the bottom, rich homie Quan change. Oh, there you go. It just moved. I was going to say that it's not moving. And usually what I've been having that it never it never moves into the second process. Now, let me explain the three processes that Serato that analyze does. All right. Now, the first process is relatively quick. This is the read process. What it does, it reads all your metadata information for your track. Anything about that track that Serato needs to know, it reads it. So that's a split second thing. That's real quick, a split second thing. That's the first one. 
The second step is a processing step. In that processing step, what it does in that step, it creates it creates all the stuff that that you need or that you want to that you want to use. So your BPM, it does a BPM count. And I don't know how it does a BPM count. I don't know if there's an internal player that does that calculates it in a specific amount of time, what the BPM is. And I don't know how accurate it is, but it creates your BPM. It creates your key or your, uh, your Camelot, your Camelot key or whatever. And there's also some other metadata that it creates, but for the most BPM and key, that's what, that's where, that's where you see that process is being made. And if you go through, if you go here and if you uncheck set key, oh, oh, and it also does beat grid. That's right. It does beat grid too. Beat grid, BPM and key. And there may be some other metadata information, but those are the three process that it does in that second step. And that second step most likely can be a little bit longer than your read step. Read step goes quick. Second step goes a little bit slower. Your last step is the step that's going to take the longest. And that's your right step. Now, if you notice with your right step, only one is going at a time. When one finishes, another one goes through. And sometimes you could have some, you have some tracks that just go all the way through real quickly. That goes from left to right real quickly. Now, these are your short tracks. These could be your tracks that may have like 30 seconds or more because it's not that much information to process. So the longer your track, the longer that that process is going to take to include BPMs. And you may even have problems with uh, doing live tracks because the tempo changes and the BPM are not consistent because uh, with a lot of old school, they didn't have metronome. Well, they had metronome. Well, no. Yeah. Some artists played by feel and you usually go by the drummer. The drummer is the heartbeat of the track. He has the tempo or whatever. So you may have some drummers that played live without uh, a metronome. Uh, you didn't have quantizing. You didn't have all the digital stuff that people have now in order to record and make albums. So that's a lot of stuff that you have missing. So the tempo changes can be can fluctuate a whole lot. But uh, that was that was something that was that was different right there that you may have a problem or that may like. Um, let's see, I don't see. Everything is moving at the same rate. But like I said, the last the last step is the right step. That's where it's writing the information that was processed in the second step to the last step. And it has to do it one at a time. Even though you're using different threads, it needs to write it to the drive. So even if you have and this is this is probably the fastest drive that you can get uh, in retail right now, besides maybe an NVE M stick. And even with that, it still won't, that process still won't change. That may be something Serato may be able to improve on to have this process to go a little faster. That may be something that we may need to, um, we may need to ask Serato, hey, can you, can you improve the analyze? My computer is already running slow. It runs fast, except for the right. It takes a long time, but usually it process one and then another one and then another one and then another one and another one. So it's, it's not consistent to like zoom, 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 zoom. In some places and some locations, depending on what your file is, it will run like that. But in this case, it runs, it, it writes the information or it overwrites the information where it was 
and then it goes to the next one that's waiting in line to be written. So those are the three, those are the three process. Read, process, write. And write is gonna be the slowest because it writes one, one data at a time or one track of data at a time. So um, that's it for, that's it for that. Uh, did we have any more questions? Because right now I can, I can take a couple questions. Let's see. Eric says, "Okay, yeah, I read that one's good." Yes, Ace, what's up? Uh, so basically, when if you have a computer to crash, this this would be the thing that I tell you to do. Find the track. Find the track that had. Uh, find the track that you played right before it crashed or maybe the track that you loaded up it could have been a track that you loaded up and it crashed so if you have if your playlist have that ready then go back and play it again play it at home and see if it crashes again this could be something that i've experienced well not really playing but just doing the analyzing that's been causing it to crash and that is the uh that is the file name and let me do that real quick. And hopefully it won't cause an issue. What I'm gonna do, because it will only do it if I transfer it back to, back to that drive. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a folder on his drive. And I'm gonna call it the bad batch. Yeah, I know. I naming it after naming it after uh, the Star Wars clones. Okay, where is it? Oh, another thing too. And this is his tribe. I do not understand this when I counted it. He has and this is not subfolders this is just main folders and i don't know i may need to count it again but yeah i think i did um yeah i may need to count it all right give me a second let me let me do this count real quick i know it was it was a lot so
Okay, I'm just gonna go with because it, it looks like it's gonna be close to, and I still have a lot now. What I was just trying to do a second ago, I just want to verify, and I probably was right the first time. I did count it. He has 500 folders on the drive. Not, nope, not, no, 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 no. Not 500 folders completely on the drive, but 500 folders the main your main when you first click on the drive there's 500 folders and we're not just talking about just folders with a lot of stuff in it we're talking 500 folders of music and i haven't checked to see and a lot of these have subfolders and some of them have subfolders in that and uh I don't know if it's three layers of subfolders. Well, yep, here's one. Uh, yeah, and this is like a compilation, uh, a discography, like basically like how I had mine. So um, the discography and then in that albums and then which which what I said was based in genre. And well, he has this based on an artist. So it's albums and then the the first album the second album the third album or whatever then you got the name of the you got the album and then the tracks or whatever that's too long that's too much need to be shortened up that's what all i gotta say about that but he has 500 just in the main when you click on the drive 500 folders and then some of those folders have subfolders, which have subfolders, and then no subfolders have subfolders. He already know. I told him this. He got a lot of organization to do to clean that up. Because like I say, Serato, or let's see. Let me see if I can go into one. And then the 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 file names have unnecessary stuff on it and these okay yep i'm gonna say this too even though it's not showing if you're getting music from somebody um if it's not from a, a record pool per se a legit record pool even if you're getting it from another DJ, clean it, clean it, clean it to your liking. That's, that's, that's probably why I don't do a lot of DJing now. I've gotten, you know, for services or whatever, helping people out. They, they've also, you know, like gave me music or whatever, even though I probably don't use most of it, but, you know, I've accepted it, but I haven't gone back to clean, cleaning up how i would want it so i have a lot of file long file names period too like say for instance you have the the actual file name and then it'll have uh what the bit rate is it'll have the year it have stuff that you don't necessarily need in that file name that's that's just basically making it longer so you need to go in and clean that up especially if you got the person that created that folder like by so and so and this is not the artist this is just this is just the person that made that folder or that made that crate or whatever you don't need that that's stuff you do not need that can cause issues to why you can crash so that's another thing i'm not going to show in it any of that i'm just going to say clean up your file names make them shorter so that's the third thing that can that can crash your um that can crash your event while in play especially if your uh your dvs has to read has to search it it's like it's like looking for somebody in a building but there are a lot of rooms and then there are a lot of rooms inside of that room so you may have to go into one room 
and then go down the hall into another room and then find uh, uh, another room that they're in. It shorten it up, shorten it up. Just make it as short as possible. What's up, Dirty One Fifty One? Last minute, brother. Last minute. I was I, I was debating on what um, if I wanted to do this tonight because I was dead tired today. I worked the day from eight to eight to four and I was by myself. But I mean, I didn't have a lot of issues. I had a lot of stuff happen just as I was about to get off. So I ended up leaving 15 minutes late or later which I hope that don't push me into overtime because they don't like overtime there. So, all right, let's see how many, how are you doing so many songs at once? Good question that you asked since you just joined in and let me explain it again. I explained it. I explained it in the beginning, but in case that there's somebody that just now watching this, let me explain how this works. This computer is, and let me pull up the specs on my computer and let me see if i can find it uh, i can't remember where to find it i knew i could find it in computer management uh, I don't even know where to find it there now. All right, anyway, I'm running Ryzen 7, AMD Ryzen 7. And like I tell people all the time, yes, you can run AMD on Serato. I've been doing it since 2008. I've been doing it with Athlon, AMD Athlon, uh, Simpron. Um, what was the one after that? Um, I can't remember, but all my all my computer bills have been AMD process. Even some of my laptops have been AMD process before before I started going Mac. So yes, you can run uh, AMD, but you need to make sure you run the right AMD. You need to run the upper scale, the the Intel compatible version. So I'm running a AMD Ryzen seven. I think it's uh, thirty eight hundred. Um, I don't remember what the frequency is, but it's it's compatible to an i7 process, if not maybe a little bit higher than some i uh, i7 processors, because uh, AMD can run better than an Intel and certain benchmark testing. So I'm running an AMD Ryzen 7 37 or 3800, and it's an eight core. It has eight cores. So with every core, you have two threads. So you have you have a core and then you have two threads in each core. So with eight cores, I'm running 16 threads. So with this, I'm running all six all 16 threads are being used in my um analyze process now if i go up to a i9 uh i think an i9 would give me 24 or maybe more i can't remember exactly what happens but the the bigger the process the more i move up the more threads the more cores that i would have and the more scans i can do now is this beneficial yes is it a lot faster than a lot of people think no, because like I just said a while ago, process one and process two will scan quickly. Process three will be the longest and will only scan one at a time. It's not like what you're seeing in the first two process where you see a whole cluster 
that scans at one time. But if you notice when it gets to the end of the processing step, number two, the uh, middle process that it stops and it waits. It's basically, it's basically put in a holding pattern or is put into uh, a traffic light to where it, it waits to get the right away to complete the process. Some can, can use like, um, what do you call it with the traffic, um, like the Georgia peach pass, the, I forgot what it's called, but with the Georgia peach pass, the express lane, that's what it is. Express lane. Some of them that have very short information, like say that are 30 seconds, or even if it's just a, a, a sound bite, or if it's a sound effect or whatever, it's not a full track. It's not a three minute track. It may be like a one and a half minute prelude track. It scans quickly. It gets the right away and it may go across quickly. So depending on your tracks and the length of your tracks is dependent on how long this process takes and also uh, what information that it has to process. Uh, it reads, like I said, it reads first. The first on the left is the reading and then the middle one is the process. That process, BPM, key, beat grid, and some other metadata. That's process for the first time. If you leave, and like I say, if I uncheck, where's my cursor at? Okay, it's over here. If I uncheck these two boxes, that step will go faster. Like say for instance, if I already had uh, BPM, there were no new tracks. I had scanned everything and there were no new tracks that were added. Everything has BPM. And as you can see, I don't know if you notice that I think some of the stuff that I had here didn't have a BPM or that didn't have information. So it, um, it ended up, it ended up being left out, but now it's complete. And I think this one right here, this one probably should fill up right here because it's missing, it's missing the key information right here. And as well as if it scans, cause right now it's scanning in sequential order. Right now, I'm in the R's. Even though some of the stuff that you see, you'd be like, okay, disturbing. Okay, that's a Rihanna track, but her name is missing. So somewhere in the process, it's still scanning that name. And with this one, that's a W. Why is the W in with the R's? Don't know, but uh, that's the way that it processes. So uh, that's that's... That's what's up with that. That's why you see so many tracks. So with this custom bill, with this computer, I would do I would do my scans on this computer. I would start uh, and let it run overnight to where it'll be done. Then I would disconnect the drive and do it to my MacBook, connect it to my MacBook, transfer music to that, or just use it on whatever computer. Find the fastest computer, do your scans on it, and then move the move the files over to your other computer. All right, so let's see. I think you had another question. You have a 2.5 Intel Core. Can you upgrade? Now with the, all right, now that is, you shoot me real quick, real quick. Shoot me, in, inbox me. Inbox me, inbox me your serial number, and I'll show you what your specs are, and I'll show you what can be upgraded or not upgraded. Because uh, from 2008, from 2008 up to 2012, I think mid 2012 or either early 2012, a lot of stuff was user upgradable. After that, you you moved into the Retina version to where MacBooks look more like uh, MacBook Airs as opposed to MacBook. They were thinner, uh, they were lighter, um, and you you had a lot less components that you could change out in it. 
the only thing you was able to change out was the storage. You was able to change out the chip that's used for storage, but you at that time you can only get it from Apple. It was proprietary. But now that was 2000, I think 13, 12 to maybe like 15 or 16. Um, now there's nothing in it that you can change out. If you if you want to upgrade, you have to buy a whole new logic board. And also transfer your data up because there's nothing in them now that uh, that can be replaced. I mean, as for you know, upgradable stuff, of course, you can probably change out your battery, which I hear that that's a difficult process. Uh, your keyboard, your trackpad, um, you don't have any drives in there, so there's nothing that you can change. Fans, speakers, you know, stuff like that. But as for stuff to make it run faster and better, there's nothing inside apple has completely locked it to where if you want if you want what you're going to use for the next 10 or so years go ahead and have it custom upgraded first have a larger hard drive or a larger storage area and whatever amount of ram you know 16 gigs or 32 gigs if you want to be beastly to where you can have it to run you can have it to run just as fast uh, in t 10 years than what you did when you first got it or whatever. So uh, that's that's the thing that you want to make note of right there. Now, like I said, send it. Yeah, send me send it send it to me real quick and I can pull up your specs and show you what you can what you can upgrade to. Unless you know, well, yeah, send it to me because some years I'm uncertain about, but some years I'm highly certain about. Like uh, from 2008 up to 2012, before Retina, I've experienced that whole, all, basically all of them. Um, I think I've encountered a couple 2008s. I have a 2009. I had a 2010. I have two 2011s here, and I've worked on a few of 2012 post retina or no pre retina. Uh, let's see. I think it sent it to me. Let me double check. I'll close the wrong window out. Yeah, like I said, inbox. Okay, good. There you go. And this is this is a site that I always uh, recommend for to um, to find out your specs. Uh, and let me do a screen share. Need to move that. Get my screen back up. All right, so here I am. All right, now uh, share it. This is this is a site I use all the time. Everymac.com. When somebody is uncertain of what they have or you know if it can be upgradable or whatever, this is the site that I use. And you go to everymac.com. It will give you probably more information than what you can find on Apple's website itself. I've never really looked up information on apple I, I always always use this site go to look up and then there that's where you're going to need to put in your serial number information and i'm a a lot of people like to protect their serial number so i'm gonna put it in without anybody looking at it all right so you click look up and then you get 
one of those am i a robot feature go ahead and check it all right so and then here we are right here here's the details Right there, here are the details. You have, uh, my brother, you have a late 2013, so you're in the retina class. And let me show you what you can do or what you can't do in the retina class. And I'm gonna run and get my MacBook and show you what, or I think I have some, some serial numbers that I could pull up. But you are just right in you about a year, a year past. And usually what you can tell or how I could tell quickly. And I had somebody today that have two, two MacBooks. I'm going to go ahead and share it. Let me go ahead and find that link. I asked, I, I had somebody that have two MacBooks for sale for a hundred dollars and they're both parts. They have them for sale for a hundred dollars and it seemed interesting. And he said it was 2014. Now I can spot, I can spot what year is what now without even, without even just looking at it from the front in most, in most cases, because I know when you went to the retina, they're a lot thinner. So the top cover, the top cover and, um, and I could do a comparison here since I have have his here. The top cover is more curved at the edges. And so it's a lot thinner. Even with the, the bottom of the case itself is a lot curved. The, the older models are a little bit more, they're curved, but they have, they have more of like a, a they have more like angles right angles on them and then they're also thicker but the main thing that that you can tell like with this one just looking at this picture um uh, without seeing the screen yep you can kind of tell and it's right here at the corners usually what i can tell is i ask a question i like do you have the cd or the DVD slot on the right side. If you have it, then you're going from a 2012 back to a 2008. If you don't have it, then you're retina. You have a you have a newer one because that's when they eliminated that. That's the first way to tell somebody what they have. You know, you don't have to say, okay, well, what what how many USB ports that you have? What ports do you have on the left hand side? What do you have on the right hand side? Usually that that's that's my first indicator. So uh, right here, you got a lot of information. A lot of information. Here, uh, bench test that was done on it. It was discontinued July 29, 2004. They started production October 27th. 22nd 2013 which that laid it that let it be to uh, um that let it be known as a late model here's your process this is your process of speed 2.4 gigahertz you got an i5 uh i think this is a fourth generation fourth generation now processors can't be updated and right here this is what you're looking for processes and the Mac can never be updated unless you know how to um, to uh, desolder and do component level soldering. But that's that's a waste of time. I wouldn't even do that because you can still run into other issues. So if if you need to if you need to increase the um, to increase your processor get another mac or get another logic board i wouldn't suggest getting a logic board because then that throws off the serial numbers 
on the bottom of the case compared to what you have in it. And I haven't ran into any yet where um, the the serial numbers don't match what's in the computer, as, especially logic board wise. All right, so that's this is one thing that you want to look at. It's soldered, but it doesn't matter because you can't do anything about that anyway. It's not like a desktop computer where you can change it out. Uh, this, if you're updating your RAM, this is what you need to look for. You need to look for these two, your RAM type. This is the RAM that you need to get. Now, with that type of RAM, you're limited. You are you have to get it through Apple at that time, but now you can get you can get various uh types. Well, no, 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 no. Cancel that. Cancel that. This one, you cannot do anything. It's soldered. It's soldered on. And let's see if it listed. It should be. Here it is. All right. This is the type of RAM that you have. It's soldered on. Can't do anything about it. This is what either you get straight out the factory. You get uh, default either four gig or eight gig is probably what you can get. If say if you got it from Best Buy, you got it from Best Buy. You can probably get it four gig, eight gig. But if you said no, be scrap that. I want more. The maximum you can get, you can order it through Apple and you can get up to 16 gig. And right here it tells you four gig or eight gig of RAM on board by default. But it could be upgraded to 16 gig at, at the time of purchase at additional cost. RAM cannot be upgraded later. So RAM wise, you can't upgrade with. So either you have four gig or eight gig. Those are, are going to be your choices. If you got it custom or if you bought it and it had it was custom where it went through Apple or wh whatever retail had it to where they had a 16 gig, then you have 16 gig. But whatever that you have, you're stuck with. So that's it for RAM. Um, your video card, blah, blah, blah. That changed out a whole lot. Uh, this is your screen, your native screen, and it's not even well. You could get 1080. That's that's a higher than a 1080 resolution, but it's not a 2K or a 4K. All right, put this keyboard so I can get to it and. Other details, your second, if you're using your HDMI port or whatever port that you have for uh, external monitor, this is your resolution for that. So going out your HDMI or whatever port that you have, this mini display port or whatever, you can get a 1080 resolution. This is the highest that you can get. And then this is other information as for your frequency. Like right here, it says um, uh, via Thunderbolt at a single 1080p display at up to 60 hertz. Uh, you can get like a 2K at 30. And well, this is a 2K at, uh, at 24. So that's what the retina. And here's your storage. All right. So standard, you got either 128 or 256. Um, you may have been able to get more. if You had it customized and it will tell you here as well. Uh, and these are your speeds. Standard storage speeds. And like I said, you was able, you can, you can replace this, but you have to order. You have to make sure that you have, uh, you have the adapter. Is an adapter, and like I say, proprietary PCIe 2.0 proprietary, and you can change it out. There was no DVD drive. Uh, there's no modem. This is just other information. You have two USB three ports. No, the FireWire is gone. 
you have the uh, SD slot. And like I said, it just tells you a lot more information. It even tells you um, down here at the bottom, if you're ordering a battery, what your battery type is. But another thing that people need to know about this as well, as well as for what you need to upgrade your, what you would want to upgrade your hardware with, if, with, excuse me, what you want to upgrade your hardware with is what's the earliest operating system you could have and what's the latest. So this started at 10, nine, which I think is El Capitan, I think, or well, maybe Yosemite. Uh, yeah, Yosemite or uh, Maverick. And you can upgrade it to Big Sur, but you know I'm gonna say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if you don't need Big Sur, if you don't need um, Serato 2.5 or, or newer, if you don't have a Rain 1 or anything that doesn't use, uh, that you need 2.5 or higher for it, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Even though they said now support it, you don't know what problems that you may have. And you can have a different problem with just one character of code that can be different from everybody else. And with this one, if you do boot camp or parallel, you can run either Windows 7 up to Windows 10. Uh, and they don't have it upgraded for Windows 11, but I guess probably when that compatible, this probably will change. Um, it doesn't support any of the older Mac system, like in the, the cat's name, lions, leopards, snow leopards, tigers, whatever. Doesn't support that back that far. It also tells you what the retail was going at at the time. And if you want to buy one use about what, what you would end up spending. So that, that, like I said, this gives you a lot of information and I use this every time to now to where I can, I can pinpoint, uh, what, what a person has. And like I said, there was a guy and let me see if I could pull up that post. Uh, Uh, okay, this is it. Okay, why can I? Okay, that was the discussion. Okay, I can't even find the post now. Let's see if I can find it. Scrolling. See if it just pops up. Shit, because it's... All right, let me go back to his post again. Nope, this was a different one. And she sold that, so can't get that one. Oh man, he sold that. I want to get that. This one. Oh, here's, he removed it, so I can't even He's removed it because uh, I told him it was incorrect. So that's why I can't, I can't view this one. Yep, he's removed it. So I can't, can't even pull it up anymore. 
All right, so, well, that's it. I'm still analyzing. This drive is still analyzing. I still got, uh, I don't know how much, but it will be running. Hopefully, it'll be done by the morning. It'll probably be done before I get ready to go to work so I can run it on, uh, run it on his laptop. Yeah, that's. Yep, you got, you got a retina. Yours is. Yours is more like this, and I wouldn't mind having. This is kind of light. This is, and I don't usually, I don't really pick deal deal with the retinas that much because it's not upgradable. I'm like, shoot. I get this, then I'm gonna have to use external drives. And usually with mines, especially with the older ones, and I'm gonna let hold on a second. Let me run. Mines is connected, but I do have another 2011 that I bought that's like exactly like mines, and I can show you the difference. Hold on a second. Just here for a minute. All right, I grabbed two, which um, I have my 2009, which is a 13 inch. And then I grabbed my 2000, well, I grabbed the 2011, which is a 15 inch. So when you're looking for a MacBook, you find somebody that has a MacBook, Get that serial number first. Tell you now, because people will try to scam you, telling you they got a 2018 MacBook Pro and they trying to sell you a 2010. Get that bad boy home and it ain't lost a little pop filter. And I may need it because um, otherwise that fan is going to be did it drop out of my shirt? All right, I have to find it later. Hopefully, it won't be too noisy. Just set the thing right here. Uh, I'm going to find it when I'm not looking for it, as always. All right, y'all let me know if that fan is too loud. Because it's blowing. Wait, there it is. Behind me. That should reduce some of the noise right there. All right, real quick. And let's turn this off. This is probably 11 inch. This is a 13 inch. As you can see a difference in the size if I'm holding it up high enough. 
and level. All right, now the screen and the keyboard looks a lot of the same. Now, the thing that I was telling you is that the thickness is a whole lot different. As you can see, this retina, I could probably sit two on top of each other and it will equal out to what, what this one is. Now, the retinas, I don't think they have fans in them, or do they? If they do, they, they're very thin and compact. Now, this one has the touch bar. This one has the touch bar on it, which there were issues with that when it first came out. Like I said, never get, I'm not going to say never, but try not to ever, if you don't have to, get anything when it first come out and the reason why i say that is let's look at it let's look at it the way that the the uh the vaccines came out but i guess in this way we didn't have we didn't have too much of a choice they they a lot of people said they came out too soon they didn't do enough testing well how many more people do you want to die before we can have something that works uh, so they did as much testing as they could. They got something that works. And well, it worked. And the rate of people surviving then actually dying from, from the vaccine is a lot less. So kind of consider it like that when you're creating something, you may not have all the possible scenarios to fix that issue or to fix issues that you may have. So the best thing is to wait it out. But with the vaccine, you can just, you just couldn't wait out. We just couldn't wait that out for forever because people, people were dying. So, um, but with this, this is not going to kill you getting a new macbook is not going to kill you i know that there were some people they have a choice but to get a new macbook they could have got an old macbook and i didn't bother to mention that to them they got the new macbook uh had big sir on it by default can't use it can't use it because serato's not compatible may have used virtual dj which i didn't think that's what he wanted to use so he basically had to wait it out until it became compatible. And then even when it does compatible, when it comes compatible, whether it's Big Sur or if it's a Rado DJ, still give it a little more time because there's bugs in it that they still haven't fixed fixed yet. And uh, like I said, with with every patch and every update, Every scenario has not been tested. And who's to say that you can be that one scenario that they didn't test in the lab, research and development didn't test and you have an issue. So then uh, if they sent out a beta version and you're a beta tester, then you submit your, your issues, your problems, they fix it, cool. But say for instance, they're past the beta testing and they said, well, let's go ahead and release it and get ready for the worst. We, we, we're going to have trouble tickets to hit left and right because people, everybody specs on their computer is not the same. Of course, they leave out the factory the same way. But once you start, once you open up and put your name on it and start downloading stuff to it, it basically changed. It changed from the second one that came off the, the next one that came off the line, just like yours. Everybody used them independently and they're now customized to what that person used for. Even if you got two MacBooks and the serial numbers are sequential. 
say if you got one and then the next one that came off the line, you bought that one too. You open them up, you put your login information in, okay, that's the same. Let's say you put Pro Tools on one, you put Office on the other. That's where you just went left field on them and you can have that issue to, to have stuff to happen all over. All right, now back to the MacBook Pro. For this one, 2009, which the 15, my 15 is the same. The only difference with the 15 besides the port is that it has it has it has two audio ports uh right here one is a mic and line in the other one is a headphone when you have a, a 13 inch you only got one right here and then that's a combo now with the retina you have a headphone but you can't use it as a mic and that's what i found out recently that on the retina versions they eliminated they eliminated the mic or the line in. It was only used for headphones. So if you need to do, if you need to do something um, with the microphone, then you need to use like a, a Bluetooth headset or something like that, earbuds or whatever. That's what, that's what you need to use in that. Um, okay. Okay. That don't want that. That's connected to TV. But those are, those are the difference. The, like I said, the, the, the retinas are a lot thinner. They start making them thinner because you didn't have no moving parts on them. And it, it, they are very quiet. They're light. Um, I guess they're fast. I don't know. I haven't really, really tested it to see how fast that it is. It's not, definitely it's not as fast as my desktop. Uh, it only has uh, two cores, which means four threads because it only allowed me to scan four tracks at a time. So um, I guess that's it about that. Ain't really nothing else. Uh, let's see, got any other questions? Like I said, I'm not gonna make this long and damn, I'm already in two hours. I said I was going to keep this short. Psh, didn't happen. But I'll uh, just let y'all know. And I'm going to work on, I'm going to try to work on that tomorrow. I will be doing a, a video for the pandemic games. Um, I need to get with the guys that's been doing it in the past and see, uh, see what's their availability. Uh, they're not available. Uh, find out if they can submit a recording, uh, whether it be video or audio. And if they're not available for that, I need to find uh, substitutes or start getting my stuff ready for myself. Um, I think what I want to do now, since I'm up and wide awake, is move over into the next room and do a little session practice if anybody join in. Because uh, right now, I still got another maybe 10 to 12 hours to finish analyzing this before I can actually test it on his MacBook to make sure that it's, of course, it's, it's running a lot faster than um, what it was when I first got it because I removed all those bad tracks off. So I know that it's doing a whole lot better than what it was then when uh, when I first got it but um uh, that is about it I'm wrapping up uh I'd like to thank you guys for checking it out for for coming in and checking out this like I said this was last minute this was last minute and I didn't have no idea what I wanted to do but I did manage to save 
some stuff just so I was able to show you what's going on. So to recap again, three things that you need to do to your library management that may cause issues. One, if you have long file names and uh, subfolders, start eliminating down to at least one folder or one subfolder and shorten up the file names. That's, that's number one. Number two, remove any invalid characters that you may have in your file name. If you're using like emojis or anything that Serato doesn't recognize, it can cause it to crash. Go in and clean those up. And then uh, the last thing is just, um, what was the last thing? Okay, there was the, there was the file names long file names, the invalid characters, and sub crates. Eliminate sub crates. And I guess that could probably be number two. But uh, eliminate any sub crates, reduce the amount of um, reduce the amount of files that you can have. What I'm gonna tell him that he can do in this is create smart crates especially if it's like temporary crates or crates that you have um, for specific events and create smart crates. That way you can have all the tracks in one folder and you're creating a smart crate. And then by adding, it's like you're making, you're making a playlist or you're making a crate based on a certain criteria. Like if you want to do something by year, you could do two thousand, and and it doesn't change. It doesn't change how many folders that you make. You can still have twenty folders. You have twenty folders, but five hundred sub crates, and that will not kill your process as for Serato as much because it's only going to create the the sub crates are created differently than how you have your files to create crates. You can have every track in one folder and create sub crates off that and the sub crates will find specific information that's in your um that's listed for your track to find it like if you have uh 2012 uh hip-hop old school it will find that and when you name your subcrate that or when you put in the criteria for that that's what it's going to search for so it's based on your information your metadata that you have in your uh crates in order to do that but uh uh that's about it like thank you guys for tuning in this is Atlanta dj zone tech tuesday live you're here with the kid uh see y'all next week i got something that i'm hopefully can get worked on for next week so hopefully see y'all then i'm back in the saddle now uh like i say get ready uh july 10th pandemic games and entertainment group if you're not part of the group hit me up and i'll send you an invite i'll send you a link to join in it's open to the public um, i'm gonna create a room tomorrow to where we can do some testing i may even do it tonight where we could do some testing on the games and see what other changes because i haven't been using rooms a lot lately for for the game so we can test and see if there's new games and new stuff that i need to make sure that i post as well but anyway pandemic games entertainment group july 10th and july 24th it's usually like a half a day event at least six hours i would like to make it longer but i think six hours enough start at six and we go up to 12 and hopefully the the guys that i have for the slots can retain and keep their slots and we can just keep it moving but anyway i'm about to sign out i need some water i will talk to y'all later if you want to join me in the cutting board at the cutting board um, i'm gonna go over 
to the rain 12 set up in the other room and get on there for a while so come and join me there i'll catch y'all later peace